Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Variance analysis is an exercise done to find out to what extent and why the project, which is in execution stage, has deviated from the original estimates or plans. The deviation could be for the better or for the worse. In other words, variance analysis is finding the difference between expectations and results. The scope of variance analysis extends to all uh, fields of project management, cost, finance, scope, resources, etc. But the focus of this discourse will be on cost. Let's start with a basic example. There is a house to be built on a piece of land, and its estimate is 10 million rupees. But on completion, the house has actually cost rupees 12 million. Therefore, therefore, it has yielded an unfavorable variance of rupees 2 million. As suggested earlier, it is not only to find out the extent of deviation, but the reason of deviation also. Or in other words, the root cause of the deviation or variance. In, the, in this example, there has been a negative variance of rupees 2 million. Why? Well, it could have been due to escalating prices of building material. So that is the root cause of the deviation. So it is always uh, essential to find out not only the magnitude of deviation or variance, but also its root, root cause. When it comes to project data, time-wise, it can essentially pertain to three phases. The estimates, which are, which, which are usually done during the feasibility study or uh, certainly by the time the project charter is signed and issued. Then the planned data and the actual data. Therefore, it is reasonable to expect for any project manager or monitoring and control officer to compare the data at various stages, comparing the estimated to planned data, comparing the planned data to the actual data, or comparing the estimated data to the actual data. Therefore, we have essentially three types of variance, estimated to planned variance, estimated to planned variance, planned to actual variance, and then estimated to actual variance. So let's spend some time on each of uh, these three type of variances. First, the variance between estimates and the plan. Uh, this variance occurs when the projects are estimated or quoted based on best possible guesses or what are referred to as the ballpark figures. Also, this occurs when the when the people who estimate are, the, are not the ones who will actually implement the project. Why does this variance occur? This variance occurs because since the project initiation or the time the project feasibility study was done, new processes or technologies or laws or taxes have been introduced. And all these carry new costs. Or the estimate in the first place was flawed. Or uh, a lot of time has elapsed between project initiation, that means when the project charter was signed, to the, to the project planning phase. And in between that period, a number of things happened over which uh, the project had no control and therefore this variance. 
The question arises, what to do in a case where this variance between the estimates and the planned figures is significant? Well, the answer is that the whole business case or the feasibility study uh, will have to be revisited. And in the worst case scenario, if the project may even have to be shelved, if it cannot be implemented in the original figures uh, or uh, in the original estimates. Next is the variance between planned and actual figures. Uh, this is the variance uh, with which uh, monitoring and control officers are, are seized with because these, this variance yields the progress of the project as to where the project is heading. Here, the monitoring and control officers use uh, such techniques as earned value analysis or uh, material rate variances or, or material uses variances or the same variances applied to the labor. And in fact, this latter uh, uh, technique is to be, uh, will be the subject of this discourse. That is material rate and usage variance and labor rate and efficiency variance. Earned value analysis will also be tackled, but uh, subsequently. What are the reasons for such a variance? Again, the same as we saw earlier, plus a few more. That since the project was planned, the material and labor costs have changed, or a force majeure has occurred, or the government has imposed new taxes, or the project has suffered from scope free. So all these have cost effects and therefore uh, this variance. What happens if this variance that is between the planned and actual costs is too significant? Well, as we discussed in the very first session, we have to take a control action, a preventive action or a corrective action or a correction or defect repair, or again, in the worst case scenario, rework. The third type of variance is between the estimated and actual variance. When does this happen? This happens when the projects are initiated intuitively. Someone just likes something and initiates a project without going into the rigors of nitty and gritty or number crunching or planning. Yes, in what Nias is, there are examples uh, of such projects and we'll discuss them in the class. This type of variance uh, also applies uh, to procurement contracts where the quotations which are received from the bidders differ significantly from their original, uh, rather the bids which we receive from the various bidders uh, differ significantly from the quotations. Again, in that case, uh, the whole process may have to be retended. So these are estimated to actual variances. Interestingly, variances are also rooted in the risk temperament of the estimator or the planner is the risk estimator or planner risk averse or a risk taker. And that will reflect in his or her estimates or planned figures. Let me show this to you graphically. In this graph, the vertical scale represents the cost. Uh, these figures are just uh, arbitrary. Uh, they don't mean anything other than the fact that as you go up, the cost increases. Well, the project estimates were this. After the project charter was signed and the project was planned, the figures increased to this level. And when the project was actually implemented, the actual cost came to this. What does this imply? That these people, 
have been too risk averse. They have been padding the estimates or the figures. Therefore, when they actually project implemented, uh, those imaginary costs or those paddings uh, did not were not required. So they were they were a saving, and hence the actual cost was less than the estimate and the plan. A case of risk aversion. Now consider this example, the same estimate, but in this case, the planner reduced the figures further. But when the project was implemented, the figures were far higher than the estimates and the plan. A case of risk taking, unnecessary risk taking. Apparently in this case, this project manager wanted this project at all costs. So he deliberately underestimated and underplanned. So the sponsors of the, uh, of the board which approved this project were very happy to see a project being executed at a low cost. But when the project actually started implementing, the real, reality dawned and the figures were much higher. Uh, than the estimate or the plan. Of course, this is unacceptable. Is this good? Well, apparently yes, because there have been savings. But no, this is also not acceptable because the company or the organization's funds to the amount, to this amount, have been unnecessarily committed to this project. These uh, funds could have been spent elsewhere, but they were tied uh, to this project. So neither of these two approaches, risk aversion or risk taking, are acceptable when it comes to variances. They should be discouraged. Ideally speaking, all these three variances, A, B, and C, A between estimated and plan, between B between plan and actual, and C between estimate and actual, uh, shouldn't exist. Or in other words, ideally speaking, all these three lines uh, should be very close uh, to each other. Now with this uh, general discussion, uh, let's now transition and focus on to the cost effect of variance analysis. And in this case, we're going to discuss material and labor how do differences in their rates as well as in their quantities uh, affect the project costs or analysis. Uh, let us first recap how on projects uh, costs are estimated, planned, and then accrued. Well, the starting point is creating WBS, work breakdown structure. It tells us what all activities and work packages are to be uh, the part of this project. It could be in, either in the form of a table or it could be in the form of a hierarchy. And this uh, WBS uh, forms part of the scope baseline. This uh, baseline or work breakdown structure helps us to define the activities. So we know A, B, C, D, E, all those activities have a designator based on WBS coding scheme. So once we know the activities, define activities so we can create activities list, we can allocate resources, human resources, physical resources, all sorts of resources to these activities. In what is in what, uh, what is called the estimate activity resources process. By the way, these are the knowledge areas in which these processes exist. So this was part of the scope knowledge area, this was scheduled, and this is resource. And this is actually how they flow. So once we've got the activities list, we allocate resources. So many laborers, so many skilled laborers, so many unskilled laborers, so many uh, semi-skilled laborers, 
so many claims, so many practices, so many excavators, etc. etc. Now, all these resources have a cost factor. Therefore, we can estimate costs based on uh, these resources. And then we can convert these costs into the budget, uh, the processes determined budget in the cost knowledge area, where we get the cost baseline and funding requirement. This cost baseline is our plan. Uh, against which is the benchmark against which we will now measure the actual costs that are accrued on the project. So it started an est with an estimate uh, somewhere with uh, the charter of feasibility study and then the planning process started and the plan culminated in the cost baseline. Of course, funding requirement also, but the baseline is referred to as the cost baseline. Now, when the project starts implementing, it is being monitored and controlled. The resources are being monitored and controlled. And once resources are monitored and controlled, we get the actual resources which have been utilized on the project. And obviously every resource has a cost tag uh, at, uh, or a price tag attached with, the, with it. Therefore, we can, through the control cost process, find out the actual costs. So here we are, planned costs, the actual costs, and it is time to make a comparison between the two, or in other words, find out cost variance. Again, uh, many techniques uh, are used to find cost variances. Uh, uh, one of them is uh, earned value analysis, uh, whose KPIs are as shown, again, uh, this is not the today's subject. Today's subject is cost variance based on quantities or, vari or variations in quantities and rates in respect of labor and material. So that is what uh, we are going to discuss now. Okay, when we budget a project with respect to resources, materials or humans. Those are budgeted based on what are referred to as standard rates and quantities as a practiced in the industry or in the market. We'll discuss this more as we, as we go along. Should these rates or quantities change as the project proceeds, there would be variance. Uh, this variance could be good variance if we are spending less, it would be a bad variance if we are spending more than the baseline cost or uh, the cost uh, which should have been accrued uh, after application of this. So variance analysis is nothing but comparing the planned costs with the actual or comparing the standard costs with the actual cost for labor and material. For material, the two variances which are used are referred to as the material rate variance and the material usage variance. If after planning, the rates of, let's say, the building material change, obviously, this will affect the cost baseline. So this variance, which is due to change of rates, is referred to as material rate variance. Material usage variance, if the quantities we have calculated are not the quantities which have actually been utilized or employed, then again, this will yield to a variance. This is referred to as material usage variance. And the same two terms, material terms, when taken to the domain of labor, Material rate variance becomes labor rate variance and material usage variance becomes labor efficiency variance. So if the, there's a change in the labor rate, obviously labor rates are going, uh, are escalating uh, every day. Uh, therefore, there can be a variance if you did not anticipate uh, the rise. And efficiency variance, that means if you uh, 
uh, if you uh, had planned on two trains and you ended up, or well, not two trains, but let's say two uh, workers and you ended up employing three, obviously you're paying more and therefore there is a variance of that. There are five key concepts which must be very well understood if variance analysis is to be done correctly. Variance analysis is nothing but an interplay of these five uh, concepts which pertain to rates and quantities, rates and quantities of labor and material. Let's go over them one more by one. The most important and the foremost is the standard quantity. Standard quantity, you can also call it the planned quantity, is the quantity of material or the number of people which are required to work on a certain activity uh, or a work package. And in case of material, it is the quantity that is expected to be utilized on that. This is referred to as the standard quantity. Of course, it is based on industrial standards uh, they, which are referred to as the quantity standards. It is very easy to work out the standard quantities. For example, if you are working out uh, the quantity of cement required for a particular work package or an activity like, uh, like slab, lenter, uh, then the rough rule of thumb is that 17.6 bags of cement will be required for 100 cubic feet of concrete which is mixed in the one is to two is to four ratio. So if the scope of work is 5,000 cubic feet, then it is just a question of simple arithmetic. It will require 880 bags of cement. So these 880 bags of cement is the standard quantity or planned uh, quantity to pour uh, 500 cubic feet of concrete in the ratio one to four. So if there is a standard quantity, there must be a standard rate. So at what rate uh, the costing has been or budgeting has been done? That rate is referred to as the standard rate. For example, you will say that, okay, 880 bags of cement and you expect these, uh, this cement to cost rupees 550 per bag. So this is the standard rate. So you have planned. Now, the moment of truth thrives. You have to now implement the project. So you have to purchase cement. Actual quantity of cement you purchase is referred to as the actual quantity, as simple as that. The plan was 880 bags. You have purchased 1,000 bags just to cater to any uh, uh, unexpected development. So you have a cushion of 200, uh, sorry, 120 bags, just in case you require for anything. So against a plan of 880, you have purchased 1,000 bags. This becomes actual quantity. At what rate you purchase this, that becomes the actual rate. For instance, instead of planned 550 per bag, you are able to hit a jackpot and purchase the cement at 520 rupees per bag. Obviously, that is going to go to your advantage. So actual quantity, actual rate. Standard quantity, standard rate. Once you have poured the concrete, you find that actually 900 bags of cement have been used. So this is the actual quantity used. So we had a standard quantity, 880 bags. We had an actual quantity, 1000 bags. But at the end of the day, we consumed 900 bags. That means 100 bags are not spare. So these five quantities are the ones which form the backbone of variance analysis. And it, it is the interaction of these five concepts, uh, two of which 
pertain to uh, rates and three which pertain to quantities uh, which generate all the variance analysis for example when you pitch actual rate with the standard rate you get material rate variance and when you pitch actual quantity with the standard quantity then you get the material yield variance uh, you can ignore the dotted lines for the time being uh, but the basic thing is comparison of rates yield to material rate variance and comparison of quantities standard and actual yield the uh, usage variance as i said earlier the foremost concept is standard quantity it must be worked out very correctly and these days it is uh, standard quantities are almost if not 100 percent 99 percent correct always you can estimate how much cement will be required on your building how many bricks will be required how much paint will be required and you can plan everything so how do you work out uh, the standard quantity i mentioned about industrial standards these industrial standards are referred to quantity standards like 14.7 uh, bags of cement required for 100 cubic feet of uh, concrete industrial standard uh, thousand bricks required for a 10 foot by 10 foot brick uh, one brick length uh, wide industrial standard so these are the industrial standards you multiply these industrial standards with the scope of work and you will get the standard quantity a few examples would be in order for example you are manufacturing trampoline sheets very favorite with the kids the raw material to be used in the manufacture of trampoline sheets is rubber what is the quantity standard the quantity standard is that 2.5 kg of rubber is required for 100 square feet of trampoline. So we got the quantity standard. Now the scope of work. The scope of work is that 10,000 sheets are to be manufactured and the area of each sheet is 200 square feet. So we have got the scope we have got the industrial standard or the quantity standard just multiply the three and we get a figure of 50,000 kg of it this is your standard quantity take bricks used in construction of nine inch standard walls industrial standard then 1000 bricks per 100 square foot of wall that is 10 foot by 10 foot wall one brick length wide will require 1000 bricks so what is the scope of work the scope of work is that there are 20 houses to be built and each house has a wall area area which takes out the areas uh, the door areas and the windows area so the net wall area in each house is 5000 square feet so this is the scope so multiply the quantity standard with the scope and we get 1 million bricks as the standard quantity for the goal when working out the quantity standards and multiplying which appears to be a very simple arithmetic operation school level mathematic arithmetic operation please make sure that the denominators and the units in the denominator and the units in the numerator cancel out each other, leaving behind just the quantity. To illustrate, see this example. Timber is required for manufacturing doors on houses. What is the scope of work? There are 10 houses. Each house has 12 doors. And what is the quantity standard or industrial standard for this particular type of door, which is designed for this house? Two cubic feet of timber per door. 
So here we are, quantity standard, two cubic foot per door, 10 houses, 12 doors per house. And as you can see, housing and houses cancel, doors and doors cancel, leaving behind the quantity cubic feet. So please make sure when you, when you uh, do this arithmetic, uh, everything cancels out except the quantity, the units uh, of quantity. This was with reference to the material. When we, uh, when we look at uh, labor, there is a slight change in terminology. Concepts are the same. The arithmetic operations are the same. Just the terminology is different. Standard quantity becomes standard effort. Actual quantity becomes actual effort, and I'll discuss this uh, subsequently also. But more important than that, uh, introduction of these two terms, effort. Effort is nothing uh, but a product or interaction of number of resources and the amount of time. That is the effort. Let's take human resources. If one person is employed for four hours, so one multiplied by four, one man, four hours, multiplied by two, four man hours. And likewise, you can have man days and man weeks. Man days means a day of eight hours and week means a week of five days. So this is how a quantity is expressed in the domain of labor in terms of effort. Effort, how many people and for how long? One man hour means one man working for one hour. One man day means one man working for one day or one day is one, eight hours. So one man day is also the same as eight man hours. And likewise, you can build up any number of uh, units of effort, man, week, man, months, whatever. Let us see how number of uh, HR resources and the amount of time period, they interact to generate effort. Let's say there are 40 men who work for five hours. So the effort is product of two, 200 man hours. There are 30 men who are working for 20 days. So this is 260 man days. If we want to convert them into man hours, then the day is not 24 hours, it is eight hours. So we multiply 260 by eight and we get 2,080 man hours and likewise. You can build up the argument further. Similarly, if we are given an effort, uh, we can convert that into number of human resources and the time period. For example, 80 man hours. What does that mean? This can mean any of these things. 10 men working for eight hours, five men working for 16 hours, two men working for 40 hours or any combination thereof. And likewise, uh, 20 man days means 20 men working for one day or one man working for 20 days or any combination thereof. So enough of uh, theory now, let's get on to the actual uh, business and that is finding out variance analysis. Uh, three approaches are prevalent uh, in the scholarship. The first uh, approach is statistics based or formula based. Please recall that we are interested in finding out whether initially we'll take the material and then labor. In material, there are two variances, material rate variance, variance and material usage rate. Rate variance due to variance in, variance into uh, variance in rates and uses due to variance in quantities. So, what are we talking about? Okay, 
we had planned on a standard rate. Remember, 550 rupees for a bag of cement. And we purchased cement at 520. So there is a variance, variance between 550 and, and uh, 520. So this difference is not to be applied on the quantity purchased. So it is a very simple formula. That means apply the difference in rates to the quantity purchased. If the purchase has been done from multiple sources, then this has to be done for every source, which we see. So this is elaborated over here. I put a sigma here. That means summation of this product from all sources. So this is from source one, source two, source three. This will become clear as we progress further. Then we have material usage variance. Variance due to usage, quantity usage. We had planned a certain quantity called the standard quantity, but actually it has come out to be something else. So there is a difference. So we have to apply this quantity to the standard rate to get the material usage variance. And once we have got the two, we can add them up and get the overall effect on the project cost baseline. So that is the statistical approach to variance analysis. Then there is a template which can be created based on these formulas. As you can see, this template has two portions. This portion is for the material purchased and this is for the material used. That means this has something to do with the money purchase and this has something to do with the quantity. Okay, what, let's take this one, purchase. What was the, what have we actually done? We have purchased a certain quantity and paid a certain, or oh, at a certain rate. So this is what we have actually done. How, what comparison can we make? The comparison can be make, okay, this is static because quantity we have purchased, but what if instead of actual rate, you had purchased this quantity at the standard rate? If this rate has been less than this rate, good for you. If this rate is more than this, then it is a negative variance. So the two interact to give you material rate variance. Let's take this side. This is the quantities. What was the plan? The plan was to expand this much quantity and this quantity was to be purchased at this rate. So that was the plan, standard quantity, standard rate. However, instead of standard quantity, we have ended up using this quantity. So again, that means there's a variance. If this actual quantity is less than the standard quantity, positive variance. If this actual quantity is more than the standard quantity, negative variance. And again, we can combine the two to get the overall effect. And the third is a simplistic approach where we just compare the planned and actual costs uh, through logical uh, calculation and come to the same result. What we are going to do now is take one example, each of material and cost, and take that example through all the three methods. So here we go. This is the problem. On a certain construction project, first slab with a volume of 6,000 cubic feet has been poured. For this activity, the standard quantities and rates for cement were 17.6 bags per 100 cubic foot, rupees 400 per bag, 1,200 bags were purchased at rupees 500 per bag from one source 
and 200 bags at Rs. 450 per meter. On completion of pouring, 200 bags remain in the store, carry out variance analysis. That means find out material rate variance, usage variance, and the overall effect on the cost baseline. Now let's look at uh, the data given in the project. What is 6,000 cubic feet? The scope of this work package or activity. What is 17.6 bags per 100 cubic feet? The industrial standard or the quantity standard. What is rupees 400 per bag standard rate? What is 1200 bags purchased actual quantity? What is 500 rupees per bag actual rate? from the first source, 200 bags, actual quantity from the second source, 450 rupees per bag, actual rate from another source. And this is our saving. So this has to be translated in, into monetary units and uh, we'll find out variance analysis. So let's now, first of all, uh, do basic calculations. First, Foremost, remember standard quantity. What is standard quantity? Industrial standard multiplied by scope of work. What is the industrial standard? 17 point, this is the industrial standard. And what is the scope of work? This is the scope of work. Multiply the two and the answer is 1056 bags of cement. So this particular activity of pouring the slab will require 1056 bags. The next is standard rate. This has been given as rupees 400 per bag. Now, if we make a purchase at greater than this rate, it will be negative variance. And if we spend more than this quantity, it will be negative variance and vice versa. Actual quantity from the first source, 1200 bags purchased at the rate of rupees 500 per bag. So actual quantity one, actual, actual rate one. And likewise, from the second source, 200 bags at 450 rupees per bag. And now, how much cement has actually been used? We purchased 1,200, another 200, but we managed to save 250. So 1,200 plus 200 minus 250, so the cement used is 1150 bags. Now something should immediately uh, occur to you. We had planned on 1056 bags. We have ended up 1150 bags. So we have consumed more cement, negative variance. The standard rate was 400, but in each of the two cases, we have paid more for the negative variance. So this activity has caused us some loss or the variance uh, because of this activity has been negative. Let's work out and find out. First of all, material rate variance due to this purchase. Well, the standard rate was 400 and we made this purchase at 500. How much we did we purchase? 1200, so obviously, Simple arithmetic gives us a negative variance of 120,000. For the second purchase, the variance is 500, uh, sorry, standard rate remains 400, made the purchase at 450. And so we have overspent by 50 rupees per bag. How many bags did we purchase? 200. Simple arithmetic says uh, we have lost 10,000 rupees. So what is the total material rate variance? We just sum up the two and our rate variance or variance due to change of rate from 400 to 500 or 450 has been 130,000. Now let's take the usage variance. Plan actual. We have overspent, overconsumed, therefore negative variance. So it is uh, right, uh, written on the wall. 10 standard quantity was 1056. Actual quantity 1150. Spent more, applied on standard rate. We get a variance of 
37,600. So what is the overall effect? Overall effect is rate variance plus usage variance. And we get a figure of 167,600 negative variance or unfavorable variance. What it means is that if you are doing earned value analysis, you have two lines, the cost baseline and the actual cost. So actual cost will now be above the cost baseline by 167,000 600 rupees. So that was using the statistical approach or the formula based uh, approach. Uh, let's now um, apply the template. This is the template if you recall. Uh, actual quantity, actual rate. This is what we have actually done. And then you find out what if I had purchased this actual quantity at standard rate. So that is one differential. In the second case, this was the plan. You plan this quantity, but you ended up consuming this quantity, and therefore there's a failure. So this data is the same, which we worked out. Just plug in the figure now. What is actual quantity? Now, we be careful here. There are two actual quantities. So we have to now do this separately for the two. So we will multiply 1,200 by 500 plus 200 by 450. So this is what it should what should appear over here? Let's see, 200, 500, 1200, and 500. Now you ask yourself, what if I had purchased these 200 plus 1200, not at 450 and 500 respectively, but at the standard rate? So over here, we will write 200 plus 1200 and then multiply by the standard rate. So 200 plus 1200. 400 and we get a figure. We compare the two and find out the variance, material rate variance. Now let's first apply logic. We have purchased cement at higher rates. Therefore, the variance has to be negative. This is logic. But I can give you an aid memoir also. If you find this quantity bigger than this quantity, or the plan bigger than actual, or the right hand side bigger than the left hand side, then the variance is positive, otherwise negative. This figure is 560. This figure is 690,000. This figure is less than this. So variance has to be negative. So apply logic or use the aid memoir, subtract one, the, one from the other, and you get a figure of 130,000. On the other side, this was the plan. Standard quantity, 1056. Standard rate, uh, 400. So that was the plan. But instead of 1056, we ended up 11.50. So now we change this to this. So let's do the, the plan first, 10,056 the multiplied by 400 gives you this figure. Now, instead of 10,056, we have 11.50. So now multiply 11.50 with 400, we get this figure. And again, when working out variance, first apply logic. What is the logic? we have consumed more cement than we had planned. Therefore, the variance should be negative. But again, the aid memoir, if this side, which is the plan, is bigger than this side, variance is positive, otherwise negative. In this case, as you can see, this is smaller than this, therefore, it is negative. So again, take the difference between the two, we get this figure. Please remember that it is the difference that you work out in variances. But when you work out the overall effect, it is always, always addition. So you add the two. By addition, I mean addition arithmetically. Plus, if both quantities are plus, they add. If both quantities are negative, they add. But if one of them is positive, one of them is the negative. Addition means subtraction, in fact. We will see it 
uh, subsequently when we drew the labor problems. So again, we have come to the same result. The overall effect is 167,600. Now we take the third approach, which is the simplistic approach, in which we just make a comparison with what was planned and what has actually happened. What was the plan? This was the plan. This was the plan. So we had planned that we would consume 1,056 bags of cement purchased at a rate of 400 rupees per bag. So 400,056, we get this figure. But what has actually happened? Actually, we have purchased this at this rate, this at this rate, and then made a saving of 250 bags. Okay. Actual cost then is this multiplied by this, plus mul this multiplied by this, since this has been a saving, 250 has been a saving, 250 multiplied by what? Well, the convention is that we always multiply the saving with the standard rate. So this is what has actually happened. 1200 bags at 500 rupees per bag plus 200 bags at 450 rupees per bag and minus 250 bags at 400 rupees per bag standard rate. Again, the arithmetic yields a figure of 590,000 rupees. This is the plan. This is the actual. Variance is always planned minus actual. Please remember that whenever we are comparing two things, the reference comes first. And in such comparisons, the reference is the plan. So plan comes first, 422,400 minus 590,000. And again, we get the same figure of 167,000 uh, negative variance. So we have done one, the same question with all three methods. And obviously you can choose the one uh, which you fancy. Now let's transition from material to labor. And here is a, a simple comparison of terminology. Standard quantity becomes standard effort, actual quantity is actual effort, standard rate, standard labor rate, actual rate, actual labor rate, a material rate variance becomes labor rate variance and material usage variance becomes labor efficiency variance. Let's jump straight to a problem. On a certain construction project, HR assignment plan assigned 200 unskilled workers on a particular activity for 100 days. So the plan was that this particular activity or work package will require 100 days and 200 unskilled workers would need to be employed. And then you anticipated that they will cost you uh, 500 rupees per day per worker. That was the plan. What happened actually? Due to countrywide shortage and escalating in inflation, no worker was available for less than 600 rupees per day. So the actual labor rate has increased from 500 to 600. Again, straight away it gives you the idea that you are going to have a negative rate. rate. However, and then you could only utilize 190 workers who, work, who completed the task in 80 days. Again, immediately it strikes you that you are employing fewer people for fewer days. So this is going to work out to your advantage. Uh, favorable variance. So carry out variance analysis. Uh, let's pick up uh, the basic data and calculations first. What is, remember over there we worked out standard quantity, over here we'll work out standard effort. What is standard effort? Effort is always number of people and the number of, and the amount of time, people time for 
HR or resources and time. How many resources? 200. How much time? 100 days. So multiply the two, 20,000 man days. Standard labor rate to 500. Now let's come to the actuals. Actuals, nine, 190 workers for 80 days. 190 multiplied by 80, so this is the figure. 15,200 man days. So immediately you should, it should strike your mind that you have used less man days or less effort than what you had planned. Good, positive variance. But the rate is more from 500, it has escalated to 600, even here, negative variance. So usage variance or efficiency variance is going to be positive, rate variance is going to be negative, let's see. Labor rate variance. The standard rate was 500, but ended up paying 600 on how many, on how much effort, not on how many employees, on how much effort. The actual effort was this. So we get a figure of negative variance as anticipated of 1.52 million. Coming to efficiency variance, well, this was the plan, this is the actual, so obviously a healthy difference and we take it, uh, we pitch it against the standard rate and we'll get the labor efficiency variance. So instead of 20,000, we used uh, an effort of 15,200 and uh, we apply it on standard labor rate and we get a positive variance of 2.4 billion. So we have a positive variance of 2.4 billion, a negative variance of 1.252 million. So what is the overall, overall, overall effect? The sum of the two, please sum, never subtract. It automatically subtracts uh, if, you do, if you do the arithmetic right. So if this is a negative figure, which is added to a positive figure. So obviously now this addition changes to subtraction and we get a figure of 80. Uh, 880,000 rupees. So by and large, you have gained 880,000 rupees. And again, talking of the cost baseline, if this is, if this is your cost uh, baseline, then your actual cost will now be less than this. It will be 800, this is the actual cost. This will, be, this will go down by 880,000 rupees because you, you have saved, made a saving of 880,000 rupees. Let's take the template, the same data, the template is the same, uh, exactly the same template as material, except that over there it was material purchased, over here it is manpower hired. Over there it was material used, over here it is manpower employed. So rest everything is the same, actual, actual quantity has become actual effort and wherever uh, we had uh, where the rates are the same. So let's now uh, substitute uh, these terms with the figures. What is the actual effort? Actual effort is 15,200. Actual labor rate is 600. So we multiply the two and get this figure. And then you say, okay, if I had utilized this effort at the rate I had planned, not at the rate at which I have paid, which was this, then how much is the differential? So now you multiply the same figure with, with the standard rate. We get this figure. What does the logic say? The logic says we are, we are paying more, therefore the variance should be negative. What does the Ed Momoyev says? The right hand side is less than the left hand side, or the plan is less than the actual therefore negative variance. So subtract one from the other, and this yields a negative variance of 1.52 million rupees, as was the case uh, using the formula. Let's come to this side, standard effort, 20,000, standard rate, this. So that was the plan. Standard effort, standard rate. But instead of this standard effort, 
we ended up using this standard effort, 15,200. So we now do the same calculation, but instead of 20,000 with 15,200, and we get this figure. Logic, we are using less effort than we had planned. So positive variance, favorable variance. Aid memoir, the right hand side is bigger than the left hand side. The plan is bigger than the actual. Therefore, the difference is positive, 2.4 million. Overall effect, we add the two, and we get this result, 880,000 rupees favorable variance. Finally, let's use the simplistic approach, same data. What was the plan? The plan was this. What was the actual? This is the actual. Subtract one from the other and we got the results. This was the plan. S standard rate, 500. Standard effort, this. So this is the figure, 10 million rupees. What is the actual? 15,200 uh, effort, mandate effort. What is the actual rate? 600, multiply the two. Uh, we get a figure of 9.12 million. Uh, subtract one from the other, not one from the other, subtract actual from the plan. Plan always comes first. And we get a favorable variance of 880,000 rupees. So that is the labor problem also done uh, using all the three methods. And we, with that, we come to the end of this uh, discourse on variance analysis.